does inclusive language, such as gender inclusive language, make a person's attitude or perspective more inclusive? For example, if this person says, whoever you choose, he will be the best man for the job, what if we somehow require this person to use gender inclusive language instead? Well, many benefits could come from that, but specifically, would that cause the person's thinking to become more gender inclusive as well? It's important to consider because we shouldn't assume it could be the other way around. Maybe the attitude is what leads them to adopt that language, or maybe there's some more complex relationship between the two. And at the level of an individual person, it's very difficult to know which way it went, because if they do have this inclusive attitude, how do we know whether the language is what did it? It could have been caused by many other experiences in the person's life. In this study by Deborah Prentice, students in a psychology course were randomly assigned into two groups, in the so-called reform group and the so-called control group. In the reform group, when they wrote one of their seven lab reports, if they happened to use generic he, then that was corrected with a note to avoid sexist language. And in the control group, students didn't get that particular feedback. What happened then was by the end of the semester in the reform group, the use of generic he had gone down. And also in a sentence completion task, students in the reform group were more likely to use inclusive language. I don't know if it was singular they or something else, but more use of generic he in the control group. So all of that's language use, it's superficial. Was there a change to their thinking or perspective? Mm, maybe not. There was an imagery task where students had 10 scenarios. It could have been something like this. Americans typically celebrate their nation's birthday with parades and picnics. What do you visualize when you hear that? Students were asked to give a name of a person that they visualized in a description. And on that basis, the researcher was able to figure out that really the result didn't have anything to do with which group they had been in that people may have visualized male or female figures and having been in the reform group didn't affect that. And in a survey of attitudes towards language reform, women tended to be more positive about it, but this also did not have to do with which group they had been in. So the researcher concludes that this language manipulation affected only language use, so only the superficial thing other aspects of cognition did not show influence of it. In a large scale study by Prewitt Frailino and colleagues, these uh, scholars ca categorized a large number of countries in terms of the primary language spoken into natural gender language countries. This means that there's a separate pronoun for he and for she, while genderless languages do not have that. And grammatical gender languages categorize their nouns into masculine and feminine categories so that in Spanish, for example, if we say friend in the masculine, el amigo nuevo, the new friend, or friend in the feminine, la amiga nueva, the new friend. And the authors found when looking at the global gender gap rating for each country that natural gender languages had greater language equality, especially in terms of women's political empowerment, while grammatical gender language countries had less gender equality, especially in terms of women's economic participation, and genderless languages were in the middle. So it seems that it's not necessarily better the less gender marking there is in a language. This could have to do, they suppose or theorize, that a natural gender language does give us a way to give more prominence or visibility to the role of women, which genderless languages have fewer resources for.